Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill. This time we're going to take a look at PWM, Pulse Width Modulation. It's something that uh, is just about everywhere you look these days uh, and it's high time the channel also took notice of that. So let's start with some theory and look at exactly what PWM is. OK, we'll start by trying to answer the question, what is PWM? Well, it's short for Pulse Width Modulation and uh, modulation is a uh, word often used to describe how information is imparted upon a waveform so amplitude modulation involves uh, varying the amplitude frequency modulation involves varying the frequency etc and pulse width modulation actually is exactly what it says on the tin uh, the information is encoded by varying the width of the pulses simple as that so here is um, a square wave and just um, for clarity whilst it is a square wave it's a square wave that starts uh, zero volts at the bottom goes up to five volts so it's not both sides of the line so to speak uh, these are pulses five volt pulses actually of DC if you like and um, we've got uh, obviously periods where it's off and periods where it's on and it's hopefully fairly clear to see from this uh, grab from the scope that the pulses are on half the time and off half the time. So 50% of the time it's on and the amount of on time is referred to uh, quite often as duty cycle. So in this case, and it's usually expressed as percentage, so in this case we've got a uh, 50% duty cycle and the little blue measure item at the bottom left of the uh, scope grab there uh, actually says 50% it's it that's measuring it ignore information to the right that's just uh, averages and bits and pieces from a number of other uh, displays so there's 50% so if we shorten the on time of those pulses well, I've now took it down to 25% of the time we've got 25% uh, duty cycle and uh, going the opposite way if we switch it on for 95 percent of the time you can see there it's uh, uh, almost on all the time but not quite um, so uh, that's uh, essentially what uh, pulse width modulation is but why why is that important well um, if you think about it, if I hop back to um, the 50 percent for a moment uh, if you think about the amount of energy that um, is available in a 50% duty cycle signal, it's actually um, the total amount of energy would involve 100% duty cycle. So half the power is there, and so it's on for half the time and off for half the time. I'm probably stating the obvious, but uh, when you get something like a 95% duty cycle, it's on for very nearly all the time, but not quite. So uh, what use is that? Well, um, it's quite handy as a way of controlling other things. So let's have a look how we could use that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to produce um, uh, a pulse width modulated signal using a signal generator, which is a very low current output device. And I'm going to use that um, to drive a MOSFET and then see if we can do something useful with it. So here is a test circuit we're going to look at. Uh, it's very straightforward. We've got an um, N-channel enhancement mode MOSFET there with the uh, source to ground and then the drain is attached to a light bulb. And the reason I've picked a bulb is it's actually a, an automotive bulb. So I can get um, uh, well over an amp of current, per perhaps about an amp, a amp and a half depending on the voltage. So I want to be able to use a very tiny signal from the signal generator to switch um, a much larger um, current uh, which is going to be in this case the bulb. So we're going to apply our pulses um, to the gate of the MOSFET and then we'll, um, we'll see what we can make of it all. So let's now hop across to the bench and have a look at that. OK so here's the arrangement then, here's the MOSFET, I've got a couple of heat sinks bolted to it just in case um, 
it gets a little bit warm. Uh, I've got input uh, from the signal generator on this red wire here and this yellow wire goes to the scope and you can see at the moment we've got um, some very short pulses and the signal generator is set to 10% um, duty cycle. The observant among you can probably just about make out a faint glow in that uh, automotive bulb that's sitting there though with the two two wires um, going to the circuit board there. So I'm now going to go up in increments of um, of 10%. So that's um, 20%. You see the bulb is now visibly brighter and you can see the pulse is lengthening. So I'll keep on ticking up. That's 30, that's 40%, 50% duty cycle now. 60, 70, 80, 90. I'm going to stop at 90. If I go more than 90 the scope will lose uh, trigger and start uh, whizzing about. But let's, let's have a go anyway. There you go. So there's your 100% duty cycle. Just about make out the little pulses. And then uh, we'll come back. Um, and because of the way the scope works it'll want me to come back in uh, 1%. So there's nine. So there's 90. And we'll come back down to... 50 there and you can see the bulb brightness is changing so if I now cycle up in between the various settings there you can see although we've got uh, the pulses I'm, I've managed to move over onto the decimal point there there we go um, you can hopefully see that although that's definitely pulsed um, it doesn't appear that way on the bulb we've got a smooth um, transition of um, well, you've got smooth light, if, that, if that's a, a good way to say it, um, but the um, pulses are far too fast for to, to be seen, certainly by a, a filament. They'd be too fast to be seen on, a, on an LED for that matter as well. So there we go. That's um, using a very, very tiny output from a signal generator through the MOSFET and using the MOSFET to control a much larger um, current. In fact... Um, if I just uh, leave it set there at full brightness, I've got. I'm using about seven volts, and uh, according to the power supply, that's drawing about uh, about 1.2 amps there. So, uh, a vast amount of current compared to um, what the signal generator itself would be um, capable of producing. So that's um, pulse width modulation in action on a MOSFET. Okay, so having looked at uh, what. PWM is capable of, how can we actually produce the signal um, if we don't have a, a signal generator or a function generator, whatever you want to call it. Um, and one way obviously is to use um, some kind of computer, a microcontroller or uh, maybe a, a port on a, on a larger computer. Um, but at a more elementary level uh, we can use the ubiquitous 555 timer chip. So here we have uh, the circuit that will produce uh, pulse width modulation uh, on pin 3 as ever with the 555 which is the output and we've got um, a pair of diodes um, opposing each other at either end of the wiper of 100k pot and that uh, potentiometer serves to adjust the uh, width of the pulses and because of the way a 555 works it has some impact on the frequency as well um, but that's uh, uh, less important uh, than the varying of the the width of the pulses so looking uh, at that on the breadboard then a nice little circuit this because uh, it almost mimic the breadboard almost mimics the the circuit diagram not not quite I'm afraid the little blue um, 100 nanofarad capacitor on the top the top right hand side uh, uh, should be is underneath on the circuit diagram but just uh, because of where uh, pin 5 is it's handy to put it on the top um, so you've got uh, diodes sort of mid left hand side there um, back to back I think that's fairly obvious uh, the um, 1k resistor coming from uh, positive rail down to there and then uh, you've got the trimmer and then the trimmer's fed in uh, to pin uh, 2 and 6 and then all through 100 nanofarad capacitor to ground. So that's the circuit. Um, let's go and have a look at the kind of waveforms we can get out of it on the bench. 
Okay, here we are with the circuit actually there, then just ignore the MOSFET you saw earlier for now, We're going to, we'll come back to that in a while. So here's the circuit exact, exactly as described on the breadboard, uh, and I've got the uh, output coming off here off pin 3, and I've got that attached to the scope, and you can see it is running, uh, just because of the value, of, I hadn't got a, exactly the value I would like here, so uh, that pot's a bit of a compromise, but we've got... Um, that's at its minimum setting at the moment, um, so not quite zero, but if I now slowly turn the pot up, you can see the pulses are widening. There we go, and we can get pretty much all the way up to 100% cycle just about there. So that's the 555 doing the job rather nicely. So that's back down again. So we're managing to produce um, PWM, which we can control with a potentiometer there, using a, a 555. So I'm just going to reconfigure that circuit now and see if we can get it to, um, all joined up and see if we can get it to, uh, to drive the MOSFET. OK, so we've now got the uh, mo uh, 555 timer circuit through a 47 ohm resistor. Uh, just as a bit of a buffer, into the gate of the MOSFET and the MOSFET is wired up exactly as before through the automotive bulb and you can see with that pulse width we've already got um, uh, a little bit of a, a glowing bulb so let's uh, let's turn that up and see what happens I've actually not tried this so this is as, going to be as much of a surprise for me as you yeah that seems to be working absolutely fine yeah there we go up to 100% and then we can vary it back down as much as we want so you might ask yourself why don't we just vary the bulb with a potentiometer well I'm sure um, most of you know that's a tiny uh, what they call skeleton trim pot um, capable of handling probably not even a, an eighth of a watt maybe a quarter of a watt um, certainly wouldn't be able to handle the kind of current that's there so if I just fully advance that there and that's drawing about one 1 1.3 amps from uh, and the bench power supply at, uh, at about 7 volts, something like that. So another thing we can do here is if I now go back down to minimum, if we now increase the voltage, so I'm going to go up to, going to go up to, uh, that's 11 volts now, and I probably need to just uh, drop down the scope view there because obviously the 555 is producing um, uh, higher voltage pulses because the supply rail is, is now higher so we can now obviously get a much brighter bulb because there's a, a great deal more current flowing so we can go up to that point there and it's drawing about 1.6 amps the bulb is now um, very bright it's eclipsing um, other bits of the circuit board there but you can see pulse width controlling that just nicely and you can obviously see the brightness level of the bulb and the width of the pulses are proportional there we go and I'll back the voltage back down to um, something a little more manageable so that's that's about um, 7 volts again and you can, can you can see the pulses there and if I just um, now disconnect the MOSFET if you just look at the shape of that waveform um, it does become a bit more square once that's disconnected. That's simply the um, the case of the uh, little bit of DC uh, leaking back through um, the circuit. So uh, there we go, and that's a good example of how sensitive a MOSFET is. Um, <laughs> and we can actually vary the brightness of the bulb just by uh, by touching the gate. So there we go. That's five 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 um, producing PWM and driving a MOSFET. OK, well we've looked at um, how we can use a very small signal to control a very large one with a MOSFET using um, PWM. And there's uh, several more ways that you can produce PWM and that's going to be um, the subject of, um, of the next bit of this video. I guess it's in a way it's part three. I'm going to include the video I did on MOSFETs as part one. This will be part two. Part three we're going to look at other ways of generating um, PWM and not sure how quite how long that video is going to going to uh, span out to but if it gets too long there may yet be another one because a friend of mine had a problem um, 
when trying to generate a PWM and it was causing MOSFETs to blow and he came out with a came up with a, a novel solution and I want to look at that as well. So that might be another one, possibly another two videos. Thanks very much for watching. Hope to see you on the next one.